BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And welcome to BBOR, the home of True Crime Talk Radio and your premier destination for unsolved mysteries, criminal psychology, and exploring the dark side of cyberspace. My name is Ned DeHaan, and I am your host as well as the creator of Astro Psych 400 here on YouTube, and regular contributor to the Zodiac Killer channel. And a great way to support these shows is just by listening to some more content. But you can also go over to Amazon.com and have a look at the book Killer on a White Horse, written by me, Ned Dahan. It is a novel, murder mystery, inspired by the Zodiac Manson connection, but it is indeed fictional. However, who doesn't love a good mystery? And there is always the Teespring page. Feel free to check out some of the merchandise. And remember, being weird is not a crime. Let the show begin. This episode of Black Box Online Radio is brought to you by Rep Sports and Ray's Energy. Are you a fan of energy drinks, protein shakes, and health foods? Well, I sure am. I use the stuff almost every single day. They sell Ray's Energy products at my local gym, but you can have them shipped to your home. Use the coupon code NED075, that's N-E-D-075, for discounts applied at the checkout. The link is in the description box. Okay, hello everybody. Today is Friday. Another Anything Goes Friday. Welcome to the show. Today we are going back to 1888 once again to revisit the case of Jack the Ripper, specifically October 15th of that year, when perhaps one of the most famous Jack the Ripper communications was mailed, and that is the From Hell letter. It was sent to George Lusk, who was the chairman of the Whitechapel Vigilance Committee, which as I understand it was more or less a patrolling group or a type of old-fashioned neighborhood watch, if you will, patrolling the streets of uh, London. And this one stands out among the other Ripper communications because it contained half of a kidney, and it's possible that it came from one of the victims. But if you Google Jack the Ripper and the From Hell letter, you'll see that many people believe that the entire thing is a hoax. Well, how on earth could that be? So let's find out throughout the duration of this episode. First, in addition to the kidney that was mailed to George Lusk, the letter, the sign from hell, says, From hell, Mr. Lusk, sore, I send you half the kidney I took from one woman, preserved it for t'other, piece I fried and ate it, it was very nice, I may send you the bloody knife that took it out, if you only wait a while longer, catch me when you can, Mr. Lusk. Definitely one of the more twisted and demented letters from Jack the Ripper because it's not simply taking credit for the crime and Catherine Eddowes, the woman who had her kidney cut out, was just that mutilated as well as some of the other victims. But this is also showing signs of cannibalism where someone is either trying to drive a fear into the heart of anyone who would learn about this story, or they're putting on the image that they are very, very deranged and demented. In fact, it's most likely a combination of the both. But the motivation for this episode was because you guys had been posting in the comments section about Jack the Ripper, and I will get to some of the comments in the later part of the episode, and I found one that was actually shared last year from JB, I believe that's you, Jerry, where it talks about um, the From Hell letter, and you'll see why I wanted to do this episode. JB writes, While I have no doubt that letters purporting to be from the Whitechapel murderer were for the most part hoaxes, there is one letter that is almost certainly authentic, the From Hell letter, which showed up after the killing of Catherine Eddowes, accompanied by half a human kidney, which was medically determined to have come from a woman about 45 years of age and suffered from a malady called Bright's disease. Not only did Catherine Eddowes's age match the owner of the kidney, but she was also known to have suffered from Bright's disease. The length of the renal artery attached to the half of the kidney matches up with the missing length left in Catherine's body. There are just too many things here for that to be coincidental. 
Also, note that the From Hell letter is the only one where the writer doesn't call himself Jack the Ripper. It is simply signed, Catch Me When You Can. The name Jack the Ripper does seem to be a creation by a journalist, but the killer himself was real, and he killed for a specific purpose. Also, if noticed that the letter was not sent to the police, it was sent to the home of George Lusk, who was the head of the Whitechapel Vigilance Committee who roamed the streets at night looking for the killer. Perhaps the killer was trying to scare this man. But then there was a response from Mark Brody who says that is incorrect and is based off the memoirs of police official Major Smith who was an unreliable source of information due to his poor memory and tendency towards over dramatization. The police in 1888 had no way to distinguish male and female kidneys as they didn't have DNA technology. Number two, the examining pathologist, including the surgeon Dr. Brown, said that the kidney had been trimmed up. There was no renal artery remaining in the body at all. I will allow that it's possible the kidney came from Eddowes, and thus the letter from her killer, but the evidence does not support that statement. Okay, so I just encountered these old comments, and I decided that I had to know more. What really happened? Because, as I see it, there are three possibilities that we're going to explore in this episode. Number one, there was a single serial killer, identified as Jack the Ripper, who operated in 1888, who committed a crime spree starting in August of that year and going to November of 1888. The second possibility is there were multiple killers working together, and the third is that this was a hoax. And if you do any brief reading at all, I'm sure you'll encounter some things about how Jack the Ripper was a hoax that was orchestrated by a publication called The Star, and in 1931, a journalist named Frederick Best admitted that he fabricated two of the communications, the Dear Boss letter and the Saucy Jack postcard but not the From Hell letter. And as JB wrote out there, the um, From Hell letter has numerous differences. Not only is the um, signature not saying Jack the Ripper, also very different handwriting. But what really happened, and how on earth would someone be, would be able to send in half a kidney if a real-life murder victim was missing a kidney and this were all a hoax? Well, with the first possibility that this was a single killer, okay, that's just the answer. Well, this came from the real Ripper, or even if it's some type of multiple killers arrangement, there certainly wouldn't be a complete hoax going on because somebody mailed in the kidney, half the kidney, that is. And then, as uh, Jerry wrote out, that letter is certainly authentic. It's from the real killer. There's no way it could have been fabricated. And when I was um, looking up some sources, I even found an ap academic journal that was talking about almost everything that Jerry just said, that, okay, this um, kidney came from a woman with Bright's disease, and Catherine Meadows had Bright's disease. Of course, it has to be authentic. I mean, all of these pieces are falling in line. Now, the skeptics and the supporters of a Ripper hoax theory simply say that all of those things are untrue. The media just went wild running trying to say that all of those details were confirmed and none of the claims can truly be substantiated. Let's keep going with some of the other sources out there. There was an article that was posted on Real Time Titanic. I've never heard of this uh, website before, but I did like the way that this one was phrased. The From Hell letter is perhaps the most interesting Jack the Ripper letter, both for its content and that it was sent with half a human kidney. It, it is the latter for that this letter is most significant. Some would argue that the other Jack the Ripper letters, particularly the Saucy Jack postcard and the Dear Boss letter, are hoaxes. Hoaxes that were used to either taunt the police or used as pranks, as most of the Jack the Ripper letters were thought to be. But with the From Hell letter, it's hard to just dismiss it as a joke or a prank. It goes further than being just a prank. The From Hell letter stands out from the Saucy Jack postcard and the Dear Boss letter. One of the reasons for that is, is because half of a human kidney was sent along with it. The other difference from the From, from Hell letter is that the Saucy Jack postcard and the Dear Boss letter are signed Jack the Ripper, 
whereas this one did not. Therefore, the nature of the from hell letter seems to be different from the other two. There's also another way that the from hell letter is different. Unlike the other two communications discussed, the hell letter was not delivered to the central news agency. It was delivered to George Lusk, who was the chairman of the Whitechapel Vigilance Committee, which was a group of volunteers that patrolled the streets of Whitechapel. Their aim was to keep the streets safe at the time. I guess at that point, I was wondering about um, two of the big things there. Were they able to determine that the female was kid... Were they able to determine that the kidney was from a female, from a woman, excuse me? And the second one was, was the kidney from someone who actually had Bright's disease? And did Catherine Eddowes have Bright's disease? Were there similar types of anatomical knowledge? Because even without DNA, I would be really just curious if medical professionals would be able to um, determine a male kidney versus a female kidney. I mean, um, a man can definitely donate a kidney to a woman and vice versa. That is uh, definitely something that we've encountered in, in even the most basic of discussions. But what really happened? Well, over on jacktheripper.org, they give a quotation from the Dr. Sedgwick Sanders, who made a report on the morning of October 19th, 1888, where he shared his opinion, and that is as follows. Alluding at first to the report that a medical man declared that half the kidney had belonged to a female, it is a pity that some do not have the courage to say that they don't know. You may take it that there is no difference whether between the male and the female kidney, as for those in animals, they are similar. The cortical substance is the same, and the structure differs in shape. I think it would be possible to mistake it for a pig's. You may take it that the right kidney of the woman Eddowes was perfectly normal in its structure and healthy, and by parity of reasoning you would not get much disease on the left. The liver was healthy and gave no indications that the woman drank, taking the discovery of half of the kidney and supposing it to be human. My opinion is that it was a student's hoax. It is quite possible for any student to obtain a kidney for that purpose. So that's the uh, hoax explanation. Any advanced medical student in London would have had access to some type of laboratory or some type of facility that would have had human kidneys available for dissection and anatomy classes, and that's where it came from. I was reading one story, though, that I believe was on Whitechapel Jack, that when George Lusk received this uh, letter and the box that contained the uh, half-human kidney, he thought that it was a prank or that it was a hoax immediately, and then other people encouraged him to contact the authorities. They said, no, this could easily be real. About the contents of the box, I have found conflicting sources everywhere. One of them said that the kidney was preserved in wine, another one that said some type of spirit, another one said that it was preserved in ethanol. That was the uh, Titanic website that I was just reading from. So I was like, well, how do I reconcile all of that? I would say my understanding is that it was preserved in some type of alcohol. And that just brings us to a very odd point, though. Like, did this actually come from the killer? Does the kidney belong to Catherine Eddowes, the victim of Jack the Ripper? And is, um, is this a hoax or is this an actual serial killer going on? A hoax meaning that... There were a series of murders that were committed that were unconnected, that people were murdered by the London street gang, starting with the murder of Polly Nichols in August of 1888 and going to the murder of Mary Kelly, the other two victims of Jack the Ripper being Anne Chapman and Liz Stride. Now, Liz Stride is part of the double event, who was murdered on the same night as Catherine Eddowes, when Jack the Ripper, by his own admission, says that the first victim squealed a bit so he wasn't able to do his thing, and her body was not mutilated. I have an episode about her called The Murder of Long Liz Stride on this channel, and that was the first episode I ever did about Jack the Ripper. As you see, I'm not some type of expert ripperologist, so I am always open to correction, and if I misstate anything, I would welcome you guys to write something in the comments section down below. But my takeaway from this um, paragraph that has been written by Dr. Sedgwick Saunders is that no, they were not able to determine 
that the kidney came from a woman, as he said very clearly, there is no difference between the male kidney and the female kidney. I'm really quite curious if um, if a pig's kidney really is that similar. Perhaps some of you guys have seen the contemporary news story about using pig organs for transplants for humans. And I'm not going to lie to you. Even when I was watching this one video on like Discovery Health once, and they were dissecting a pig, once the pig was actually cut open, I was like, wow, it's, um, the pig's body really resembles a human body. I would expect that if medical professionals are examining the kidney, like nephrologists or something like that, then they would be able to determine that it was human versus a pig's. But I certainly can't make that determination. And it's also important to remember that the original From Hell letter, as well as the box that the kidney was contained in, are no longer present in any archives. They have simply been lost. There's only a photograph of the letter. On, on an interesting side note, the original Dear Boss letter was stolen from the police archives, and the story is that it was returned the authentic one was returned, that is, in 1988 for the 100th anniversary of Jack the Ripper. So what is my ultimate conclusion on the authenticity of the From Hell letter? I don't know. I wish I had something better for you than that. But even saying that we can't identify the gender of the female kidney, I'm simply not sure. Did the person who... um? Or that the kidney came from have Bright's disease? Did that kidney come from somebody with Bright's disease? I also simply do not know. And I think that there's a fair amount of weight in that skeptical theory where they said that someone may have just been looking at it and assumed that the kidney had Bright's disease based on superficial observation. And I really can't um confirm or deny that. And I think that this one, unfortunately, may be somewhat lost to history. I I think it's a very, very elaborate prank that someone would go to, to I guess, um, I mean, they would firstly have to either be a medical student or have, know someone who had access to these types of uh, facilities, cut the kidney in half and send it in, as opposed to just writing another ordinary hoax letter. They could have sent in the letter without the kidney, like the way that 150 other people did. I guess they just wanted to make a mark, so to speak. Or it could be from the real killer. So um, there's a, there's just a lot of conflicting information and I do think it's rather odd that when you get on a website such as Wikipedia or something and you read about the Ripper, they'll say expert criminologists have determined that the letters are hoaxes, but they don't provide a lot of supporting details as to why they are hoaxes. Now, of course, there, as I said, there's the Frederick Best confession, but... What about the From Hell letter? Because Frederick Best didn't confess to the From Hell letter, and I'm really undecided. As far as who was Jack the Ripper, uh, to some of you guys who listen regularly, you'll know that I lean toward the Ripper hoax theory that this was, again, orchestrated by a newspaper such as the London Star, and it was done to just um, generate some mass hysteria and sell papers and get people focused on just that, the news. I absolutely do not endorse it 100% or I, do, I don't know everything that happened. And I also can't tell you, was the From Hell letter from the killer or not? I think the skeptics are making somewhat of a reasonable, reasonable case that somebody sent in this prank. It could have been a human kidney that was just taken from the medical lab cut in half, put in some type of alcohol, and put in a box that was sent to George Lusk. Yet, what if it's not? It could have also come from the actual victim. I mean, it's definitely, definitely disguised that way to make it look from like it was from the real Ripper. But what do you think? Do you believe that the From Hell letter was authentic? And which story and what set of events makes more sense to you that this is indeed from the real Jack the Ripper, or that this is just a hoax, that this was a medical student who stole the kidney and the person 
either didn't have Bright's disease or they just assumed that the uh, kidney was from someone with Bright's disease. They just assumed that the kidney was from a female. And um, I would say my only takeaway from this episode to that point is that the um, they they did not have the ability to determine that it was from a female. But um, to get to some of your comments about Jack the Ripper, as I said, you guys were sending in some recently. First, I would like to reiterate the point that the Ripper allegedly attacked Polly Nichols and then Ann Chapman. And then there's the double event with the murders of Liz Stride and Catherine Eddowes. And the Ripper would say that Liz Stride screamed a little bit. I think the exact word was squeal. The first one squealed a bit, so he couldn't do his thing, so he went looking for another victim. And from the beginning, I have encountered all types of alternative theories about how no Liz Stride was not actually murdered by the Ripper. She was just another woman who was killed nearby, and Jack the Ripper took credit for it. And Matthew Lawton has written out the reasons why... Elizabeth Stride wasn't killed by Jack the Ripper. Number one, she was killed south of Whitechapel Road. Number two, she wasn't strangled. Number three, the knife used was different. Number four, the cut to the throat was different. Number five, she was laying on her side, whereas all the others were on their backs. Number six, there was much more blood at her scene. Number seven, the killer drew attention by shouting out Lipsky as the others were strangled before the throat, before the cut to the throat, Elizabeth Stride was probably killed by somebody else. I mean, it is quite possible. I said very early on, though, I thought there was a low chance that um, Liz Stride was actually murdered by Jack the Ripper for these um, particular reasons. But uh, the narrative has definitely been established, and there's even a motive provided as to why her body was not mutilated. Now, as far as um, there was much more blood at her scene, referring to Liz Strides, no, I think the other victims who were mutilated perhaps would have had more blood um, at their scene. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how you mean that one, but everything else I can follow. And the next comment is from Carl Carras, who says, I wonder if you've come across the Ripper book. They all loved Jack, Busting the Ripper by Bruce Robinson. Here's a little blurb from Goodreads. In a literary high-wire act reminiscent of both Hunter S. Thompson and Errol Morris, Bruce Robinson offers a radical reinterpretation of the Jack the Ripper crimes, contending that he was not the madman of common legend, but the vile manifestation of the Victorian age's moral bankruptcy. I found the solution compelling. The killer was a popular composer and associated, by the way, with Gilbert and Sullivan of Mikado fame. Well, thank you so much for that, Carl. And yes, uh, talking about the Mikado, that is definitely connected to the Zodiac Killer mystery. And I've said it once, and I'll say it again. I believe that the answers to the Zodiac mystery will be found in the Jack the Ripper case. The Zodiac Killer is a cheap 20th century Jack the Ripper knockoff. And I also firmly believe that when the Zodiac Killer murdered Paul Stein on October 11th of 1969, cut off a piece of Paul Stein's shirt and mailed it in with multiple letters, that it was emulating from Jack the Ripper. It's almost trying to recreate the From Hell letter because, of course, the Zodiac isn't going to cut out Paul Stein's kidney. I mean, maybe he didn't even know how, which wouldn't be shocking, but he could cut off a piece of his shirt and that would definitely be something that would be feasible to do if you're murdering a taxi driver. And that that was mailed in with some Zodiac communications, such as the six-page letter, the Melvin Belli letter. I, I, I firmly believe that that's paying homage to Jack the Ripper. But did you notice all of the misspellings that were found in the From Hell letter? Let's read the text one more time. From Hell, Mr. Lusk, Soar. I send you half the kidney I took from one woman, preserved it for you. T'other piece I fried and ate it, and it was very nice. I may send you the bloody knife that took it out. If you were only wait a while longer, catch me when you can, Mr. Lusk. I mean, there are just countless misspellings in this one, and 
the Zodiac Killer is also famous for his misspellings, and that is my genuine take on the subject as well, that that is just something that Jack the Ripper did, so the Zodiac Killer decided to do it too. And one point that I shouldn't even bring up is, after reading this letter um, a couple times, I just could not stop thinking about Borat, because there's this one line that says, I fried and ate it, and it was very nice, and I cannot get that out of my mind. And I really don't mean to make light of that, but, well, this is some deranged, demented individual. Even, even, if, even if this is a prank, which I'm not saying it is, this is a terrible thing to do to just mail in some type of organ, especially if somebody actually stole a human kidney from a medical lab, cut it in half, just to be annoying. I know they didn't have things like Comedy Central and internet porn at the time, but that's just, um, someone's very messed up in the head to even do that as a prank. And if anyone is curious about the book They All Love Jack Busting the Ripper by Bruce Robinson, here is the description from Amazon.com. In exploring the case of Jack the Ripper, Robinson goes beyond the who that has obsessed countless others and focuses on the why. He asserts that any gentleman that walked above the faded gutters of London in the 19th century's most depraved city often harbored proclivities, both violent and taboo, yearnings that were entirely unpunished, especially if he also bore royal connections. The story of Jack the Ripper hinges on accounts that were printed and distributed throughout history by the same murderous miscreants who frequented the East End of Her Majesty's London, wiping the faded muck from their boots when they once again reached the marble floors of society's finest homes. Supported by primary sources and illustrations with 75 to 100 black and white photos, this breathtaking work dismisses the theories of a previous set of ripperologists, Robinson persuasively makes his case in a unique way. The Ripper was far from a poor resident of Whitechapel. He was a way of life. And now I will turn it over to you guys. What do you think about the From Hell letter? Do you think that this was an authentic communication from Jack the Ripper, the person who murdered the women in London in 1888? Do you believe that there was more than one killer and that this could still be an authentic communication from the killer, except this person didn't murder everyone associated with Jack the Ripper. That's the idea that, oh, there was a Ripper. This is not a hoax. It's just maybe he didn't commit all the crimes attributed to him, and he committed additional crimes that were not attributed to him. Lots of people have those types of theories in these unsolved serial killer cases. Or do you believe that this is just a flat-out hoax? It was created by the London Star. Women were murdered in London somewhat regularly back in the day. As you just heard in that book description, almost every man had some type of violent tendency, so to speak. And forensic science was not what it used to be. People weren't as afraid of getting caught. And that the actual hoax theory ties into women were murdered by the London street gangs. Maybe they were blackmailed in some way, or they couldn't pay money that someone was trying to extort out of them. So they were murdered, and it sends a message to some of the other women who are working a certain profession in London, and that somebody wrote letters taking credit for murders that he did not commit. That is really what a hoax theory is. And that, that isn't really a hoax. As uh, Rick Hansen, a former uh, long-time listener of this show, said, if a single drop of blood has been spilled, it's not a hoax. Maybe it's a fraudulent activity or a lie, deception. But which theory do you think that is most plausible to you regarding the From Hell letter? Is it from the real killer? Is it from a single Jack the Ripper? Or is it a hoax? What do you think? Okay, please put your ideas in the comment section down below, as well as share anything you want about Jack the Ripper and any of the other Ripper Connected Cases. That's all for me now. Anybody can write the show at blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com. You can also get me on Facebook. 
My personal Facebook is in the description box. And there is always BlackBoxNid88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. See you over there, and until next time.